Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to the farm. I am Jolene. I'm going to be your moderator today for our last virtual farm tour of the school year. We hope you all had a good school year. We know you're anxious to, to head out for some summer break and some fun. So we wanted to bring you one last farm tour for the year. So I'm excited to also be at the farm today. I'm going to be highlighting some of the adult cows, which you can see behind me. I think they're eating some lunch right now. And we've got some other areas of the farm that we're going to visit as well. So we hope you're ready. We hope you came with lots of questions. If you're joining us via Zoom, please put your questions in the QA function on Zoom. If you're joining us from Facebook, please drop those questions in the comment section. We're gonna try to get through everything today, but we've got lots to cover. We know you've got lots of questions. We've got you know, some fun things that we wanna show you. If we don't get to all of your questions today, there is a frequently asked questions document on our website on milkmeansmore.org. So we hope you'll go and check that out after the farm tour and you'll find some other virtual farm tours that we've done throughout this school year as well. So let's go ahead and let's get started. We've got some guests with us today. We've got uh, farmer Chris and farmer Carla and some of their kiddos with us. And we also have a special guest. We have Lindsay Tarpley, who is a two-time U.S. Olympic gold medalist and soccer player, and another uh, fellow Michigander like the rest of us. So we're excited to have her and her kiddos here with us as well. So let's go ahead and go over to the, the calf barn. That's where everybody else is hanging out. They're with the babies today. I'm with the adult cows today. But Chris and Carla, if you guys could tell us a little bit about yourselves and your family and your farm, that would be awesome. At first, thank you, Jolene. Uh, yes, I'm Carla, and I am actually the sixth generation to be on our family farm. Uh, Chris and I took it over from my parents, and Chris is also from a farm. And we have our cows on pasture here, and we love taking care of them, and we love taking care of the people and the environment and all of it, and we love showing people what we do here on the farm. Awesome. Thanks. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, thanks, Carla. I'm going to introduce two of our three boys here, too. This is Cole, and this is Ty, and I'm Chris, and we are currently milking about 500 cows on this farm. We grow crops on about 900 acres, and all of that is for feed for the cows, so keeps everybody very busy. We also have 11 employees, and uh, we keep very busy at the farm, and we're excited today to show you what we do. Awesome. Thank you. And I know you both keep very busy with your boys as well. They're really active in school and in sports as well. So, so glad that they could join us today. Lindsay, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, of course. Um, first of all, thank you so much for having us. Uh, my kids and I are thrilled to be here. And it's, it's always fun to experience something like this and, and learn how everything happens. A little bit about me. Um, I am from Southwest Michigan, was raised there, grew up playing soccer all across the, the great state of Michigan. And I went to school for college at the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill. And while I was in college, I was invited to try out for the senior women's national team. So I started playing with the USA team when I was 19 years old. And I played in two Olympics, uh, a youth world cup, a world cup and um, absolutely loved my time. And so after my playing career was over, I came back to Michigan and now my family and I are happy to be back in, in the Southwest Michigan area. Um, these are my children. This is Jacob, he is eight years old. And this is Allie, she is six years old. And we are super excited and they wanted to give a little shout out to their schools. I'm more afraid Eagles. I want to give a big shout out to Mrs. Jellick's class. Hi, um, hi, Mrs. Big Eagles. I want to give a big shout out to Mrs. Zook's class. Great job, kiddos. Yes. Awesome. Hi, Horse Bridge, and hi, everybody else. <laughs> Thrilled to be here. <laughs> awesome. Well, we hope your classmates are watching you today as you learn lots on, on this tour. 
So, uh, Lindsay, uh, the Olympics are going to be starting in Tokyo. I think it's about 58, 59 days away. And you mentioned that you played in two of them. Can you tell us uh, where you won your gold medals at? Of course. I love that. Um, my first gold medal was in Athens and my second one was in Beijing. And there's just something so special about the Olympics. And I'm so proud to be here and just feel the Olympic spirit and know that big things are coming this summer. Absolutely. I know we're all excited to cheer on everybody who's competing. Um, Lindsay, I'm going to turn it over to you because I think you and your kiddos have some questions for Chris and Carla, and they're going to give you a little bit of a tour of the calf barn. Yes, definitely. Um, we, we are in charge here, kiddos. So the first question that we are going to ask is, can you tell us about the calves? Showing people the calves is one of my very favorite things because as you guys know, when you first came here, uh, they're adorable. They're never, they never get less cute. And what we like about them is when they're born, we are really interested in taking the best care of them possible. And that goes through their whole life. We take them, we clean off their belly button, we put them in straw, we feed them their mother's milk. And that kind of care continues to when they're adolescents, when they're teenagers, when they're new moms, all the way through their life. Um, they, but when they start out as calves, everybody wants to have a little calf uh, that you can pet. I believe that. We just saw the, the newest ones about five days old, and they're absolutely adorable. Now, when do they start walking? I mean, the, the barn is full of all of these wonderful, beautiful creatures, but when do they start walking? Yeah, actually, it takes sometimes as quick as a half hour. Wow. And for sure, by two hours, they're up walking oh, around, and they're ready to go. They're two ready to hours? start running around, and they're ready to eat, more importantly. So it's right away. Wow. Um, certainly happy that it took, you know, a little while for my two to uh, start walking and running. <laughs> um, and now you have a beautiful barn and you have a beautiful barn over there with lots of land and, and things going on. But why do the calves live in the barn? Sure. We try to give them the best environment here in Michigan, no matter what the weather is. So today it's a very windy day, but it's beautiful. It's nice. And as you can see in the background, we have curtains that actually can go up and down. So when it's nice out, they're always open. They're nice and shaded. This barn is insulated. It keeps them nice and cool in the summer. But when it's nasty and cold and snowy, like we all know it does in Michigan, we can roll those curtains down. We keep these fans running almost all year long to give them fresh air, but it keeps the snow and the cold and the drafts out. So putting them in barns really gives them really great care year round, no matter what the weather is. We do put some of our uh, animals outside as well, gives them great exercise, access to the outside. But when it's real hot or real cold, they prefer to be in the barn. It's nice in there. Hey, first class treatment. I love it. <laughs> And I'm over here in the cow barn, as I mentioned earlier, and the fans are on in this barn as well. So I don't know if you guys can see those great big giant fans, but they're pushing air over the cows to keep them comfortable as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Lindsay, I wanted we to actually ask have our question. Oh, go ahead, Carla. I was just going to say we have them set on a thermostat. So anytime it gets over 70 degrees, they go on immediately. And it really helps with keeping them cool and makes me really wish I had air conditioning as nice at my house. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> Absolutely. I say it feels really good over here. I'm loving my spot. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice over here as well. Perfect. Perfect. These, these cows are pampered, aren't they? We try our best. That's for sure. <laughs> so Lin Lindsay, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, as a U.S. Olympic gold medalist, you know, you needed to nourish your body um, with mm -hmm. food so that you could perform, you could play your games, you could practice. Can you tell us about that, that nutrition? Yes, absolutely. It's a great question. And throughout the course of my career, especially when I was playing at the elite level, there is a very, very slim margin between what makes somebody good and better 
and best. And you're constantly trying to fuel yourself the correct way. So I learned the importance of being able to make sure that my body was fueled in a way that I was going to be maximizing my potential. And when I say fuel, um, a lot of that has to do with getting nutrients and and making sure you're eating a balanced diet that has the five different food groups incorporated with it. I try to um, have three servings of dairy a day. My kiddos try to have about 2.5. And it, it's just the way we live and the things that we prioritize. And one thing that we've really loved this year, um, my mom has always told me the importance of eating breakfast and making sure that you are putting nutrients in your body right when you get up. Because again, if that's fueling your body, you have to make sure that you are doing everything you can to have a successful and a great day. And we've been fortunate this year to, to have breakfast at school for my little ones. And they have loved being able to, we walk to school and then they go grab breakfast. And that's been a wonderful way to make sure that they are starting their day with nutrients and fueling their body for success. Yeah, ab absolutely. It's the most important meal of the day to get started. Um, while we're kind of talking about nutrition, uh, Chris and Carla, I am right here uh, by one of your cows, a couple of your cows who are eating. Can you talk to us about the nutrition that you provide to, to these milk cows and um, why it's so important and such an important part of what you do? Absolutely. Um, one thing I think it would surprise a lot of you is we hire a professional nutritionist to help us with all of our feed for the cows from when they're babies all the way up to when they're milking. And so all of this feed for the young heifers as well as the cows, I don't know if you guys can see this very well, but we feed them what we call a total mixed ration or TMR. And what that is, is it's essentially a casserole for the cows. We mix a lot of different good healthy feeds for them all up together so that pretty much every bite of this feed is going to be the same for them so the nutritionist balances this for all the right nutrients and then we mix it up every morning and feed it to those cows and make sure that they have good healthy feed in front of them 24 7. Oh, wow. That sounds like a very important job. Um, if you're balancing it and adding all of those vitamins and minerals to that. Um, can you tell us how much do these cows in, in front of me, how much will they eat a day? Oh, these cows uh, today are giving a lot of milk. Uh, <laughs> so they about 10 gallons a day per cow is currently what they're giving. Wow. So each cow okay. every day is going to give 10 gallons. So they need to eat a lot of healthy feed to produce that much milk. So those cows in Jolene's barn are eating approximately 150 pounds of feed per day. Oh my goodness. And then can we maybe put that into context around like how big are these cows that, that I'm standing in front of? Absolutely. Those, those big girls that Jolene's by are weighing probably between 1,400 and 1,800 pounds a piece. Wow. So those big ones are <laughs> almost a full ton. Wow. So they do need a lot of food to help them grow and to then give that milk, like you were saying. Absolutely. So Chris, we... Uh, or Carla, whichever one of you wants to take it. And I see we've got a close-up of some calves here um, that we can highlight. We had a question come in asking, what are those tags or numbers in their ears? Carla, go ahead. Yeah, I'll take this one. Our calves are tagged when they are born. And since we have so many of them, these are like their names. And they keep these names and they keep their tags their entire life. They are, are tracked from the first day they were born. So we have all of their information. We know when they were born. They, we know when they have a calf. We know how much milk they give. Um, and we use their numbers like names. So we're like, oh, there's 800. She's such a good cow. I remember when she had little 996, you know. And so it's, it's just a way that we have so many and then the special ones you always notice and you always see, I have a real fondness for red and white Holsteins like that one right there. <laughs> oh, she's really pretty. <laughs> um, so, 
can what uh, what kind of cows do you have? What what breed of cows are these? Yes, we have Holstein cows. Holstein okay. cows are known for giving great milk, and so we have black and white Holstein, and then they, we have what's called a red and white Holstein. Okay. Yeah, she is very, very pretty. So we, a couple more questions came through the chat. Somebody wants to know, do cows sleep standing up? And I'm actually going to walk over so we can see some of them. <sighs> Okay, I, I know that Chris could answer this as well, but it's one of my favorite questions. No, <laughs> cows sleep lying down. They sleep lying okay. down. You can't tip over a cow. I'm doing this as a public service announcement. If someone's telling you they're going cow tipping, they're fooling you. They are trying to lure you into a field and play a joke on you. They sleep curled up, uh, sort of like a dog or a cat does lying down. And cows love to sleep. They spend a lot of time lying down they spend a lot of time chewing their food and if um and just watch out for those people <laughs> okay well you've got some comfortable cows over here in this cow barn because most of them are laying down at me so they are very cozy and comfortable over here <laughs> good to hear <laughs> so while we're talking about the cows a little bit um we uh we are on a dairy farm you guys are dairy farmers and um, we are going to show a video of the milking process. That's one of the most important jobs on the farm. So we want to be able to show our students today how you collect that milk from those cows. So let's go ahead and play that video. the milking parlor. We're going to just show you really quickly how we milk the cows. So the very first thing that we do when we bring the cows in is we dip them with an iodine solution to sanitize and clean their teeth. So that would just be like you using hand sanitizer on your hands. And we just let that sit on there for about a half a minute. Then what we do is we strip a little bit of milk out of every quarter to make sure that the milk looks good and there's nothing wrong with the milk and that she's nice and healthy and everything looks good. That also helps her get ready to start the milking process. And that's the next thing we do, which is to clean the teats really well. We only use one of these towels per cow and we wanna make sure and clean them off really well, as well as it gets her ready to start saying, okay, it's time to let my milk down now this is what we do three times a day, every day. So after we clean them off really well and get them ready, we usually go on to the next cow and it's good for them to have a little bit of a break to really get ready to milk. And then that's when we come back and attach the machine. So these are all automatic. It's a very gentle suction. And all we do is attach one for every quarter. And then that milk starts flowing through the hose directly into the pipeline and it doesn't touch any human hands until it goes to be made into dairy products way, way down the line. So these are our two big milk tanks and I wondered if anybody could guess how big they are, how much milk, how many gallons of milk do you think each of these holds? Obviously this one's a little bigger than that one, right? So this one holds 4,000 gallons of milk and this one holds 3,000 and we ship more than this tanker full to the milk plant every day. All right, so this is where all the milk comes from the parlor out to our cooling tanks here. So we have two tanks 
and one gets picked up every day, one gets picked up every other day, and that milk really never touches human hands after it comes out of the cow. It's piped directly through the piping, goes through a pre-cooler up overhead here by the ceiling, and then it comes right into the tanks where it's then cooled down to about 37 degrees, and it stays that way until the milk truck comes they hook up all their hoses and it gets piped directly into the milk tanker again without touching any human hands. And then it's off to the final destination where it gets made into all of our favorite dairy products. Awesome, thank you for sharing that with us. So a um, couple questions just to uh, wrap up about the, the milking process. Chris, can you share with us how long does it take to milk each cow a day? Sure, absolutely. Uh, it's usually between six and eight minutes, depending on how much okay. milk the cows are giving. It's very quick. Wow, that is, that is a really quick process. And then where does your milk go once it leaves the farm? You mentioned it goes to a processing plant, but then where does it go from there? Absolutely. So we're fortunate enough, we belong to a cooperative uh, milk marketing. So all of our uh, processing plants are owned by all of us as farmers. And we're fortunate enough to have one of those plants just down the road about 20 minutes. So it crosses over the highway and then that gets separated into different ingredients for making butter or making cream that'll go into ice cream. A lot of it stays right here locally in Michigan. And so it's not a very far trip from our farm to the processing plant to the grocery store. That's so great. And milk really is a fresh and local food, isn't it? <laughs> it definitely is. Yeah, wow. I'll chime in here too. Yeah, you can check always uh, where your milk comes from. There's a five digit code on it. And the five digit code uh, starts with Michigan's is uh, starts with 26. So you can always be sure where your milk is coming from. Okay, so there's a five digit code on, on milk is, is what you were saying. And I'm gonna try and see like right there. I don't know if we can see on my camera, um, but 26. That, that signifies that it, that milk is from the great state of Michigan. That is the magic number. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I'm trying to hold the camera and, and my chug of milk here that I really want to drink. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, just going back to that video, you mentioned a couple times, milk does not touch human hands. So we have lots of protocols in place to keep that milk cold and fresh until it gets to the store or to the school where our students can enjoy it. Yes, that's absolutely true. Uh, we all have it's all stainless steel. I know that the rest of the world started wearing disposable gloves on a regular basis recently, but people milking have been doing this for quite some time. And the absolute quality of the milk really matters to farmers. So we make sure, like you said, it doesn't touch human hands. It's all stainless steel. It goes, honestly, straight from the inside of the cow into the container so that we can share it with everybody at the grocery store. That's, that's great. Um, so we just have a few minutes left. Uh, Lindsay, um, you know, school's gonna be wrapping up soon. I bet your kiddos are excited, but um, how can families make sure that they get the nutritious food that you mentioned earlier in the tour? Yes, you can find summer meals on your school district's website or go to www.michigan.gov slash meetup and eat up. And I will also be doing a program that I'm extremely passionate about called Community Kicks. And what that is, is I partnered with Milk Means More and we provide a lunch and four soccer skills and four life skills that a student athlete um, can come out and get. And, and honestly, you don't have to be an athlete, but I say that because we go out and we encourage people to be active. So everybody is an athlete because you're coming out and you're a part of it. And we really prioritize the life lesson, um, the, the being active part and making sure that you are fueling yourself with the right foods. And then also make sure you watch the Summer Olympics. It's such an exciting time. <laughs> and I know personally uh, how hard it is to get there. And so these athletes and being a delayed by a year, um, make sure you're tuning in, supporting. And I know I will be. Kids wanted to show the, the calves 
eat for the yes. first, I think they say, and this bottle. So they were pumped to show you this. Do you want to, you want to see if you can, <laughs> you can try it here? <laughs> oh, they like it. Oh my gosh. They, uh, your kiddo found some friends, but Lindsay. Again. <laughs> Oh, yes. Yes. They have had a, a great time. And thank you so much for the education and showing us how everything works. Um, it's been an honor to be here and such a privilege. So thank you for making us feel so welcome. Aww. It is our yeah, absolute so pleasure having you. Thank you. Yeah, we're so glad that you all got to, to come and experience. I mean, this this is a true family farm and for you to be able to bring your family and, and enjoy as well. Um, we've got a we've got about three or four minutes left, so just a few questions that that came in. Um, Chris, you mentioned that you've got a team of people who work on your farm every day. Are there others in the community who you work with? Absolutely. Uh, we talked a little bit about the nutritionist that we hire, and he goes around to many farms to help with feeding the cows the right way. We also hire a lot of people to help on the crop side, growing crops and taking soil samples so we know exactly how to grow the best feed for these cows. We have suppliers that help us fix things because we pretty much run all the time and machinery breaks and you need help for people fixing. And there's a lot of other members of the community that uh, really support the dairy farm. And then we as a business locally support a lot of our community members as well. So it definitely takes a village to uh, have a dairy farm and keep it running. Absolutely. And, you know, you've got your son standing right there next to you. What are they looking forward to this summer? That's a good question. She wants to know what you guys are looking forward to this summer. I, the, first, the first answer I'll give is working. They're looking forward to doing a lot of work on the farm. But you guys yeah. have anything else you're looking forward to this summer? Okay. And we go down there. If you can see the pails in the background, we feed up the calves, the pails, and Anything else? Any sports you're going to do this summer? <laughs> uh, going to a lot of basketball camps with our school together and a lot of athletics that we can all be a part of. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and it, right. we really enjoy, we enjoy uh, when we say it's a family farm, we definitely, uh, we mean it. Everybody chips in because there's a lot of work to do. Yes, absolutely. A lot of work to take care of these girls and to keep them pampered like we're seeing today, right? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. But it's a great, great way to uh, live and work and play all at the same time. Awesome. Awesome. So before we wrap up, I just wanted to share a couple of things. Um, you know, I, we work on behalf of Michigan's 1,200 dairy farm families, uh, many of them like the Wardeen's. Who, uh, who have been in operation and taking care of their cows for, for decades. And so we just enjoy being able to show how our farmers care for their cows and the land and how they provide milk for, for you students to enjoy at school. Um, for the parents and the teachers joining us, if you want to watch some more virtual farm tours, those are on our website at milkmeansmore.org. We also have the frequently asked questions document that I mentioned at the beginning of the tour um, if we didn't get to your question, we had lots coming in and we we're trying to sort through all of those, but some great questions today. Um, thank you all so much. Um, and I think I'm going to turn it back over to you guys in the calf barn for one last, one last comment. Great. Well, thank you. And, and my daughter is busy uh, still feeding the calves. <laughs> and I just wanted to throw some milk your way because you're definitely going to need milk for that. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for coming. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're good at talking. Good job. <laughs> Are we done? Good. <laughs>